As the soundtrack who provide the lyrics to wrestling, the commentators are vital in getting talent over, and some announcers will have certain wrestlers they gravitate to most. It's As seen from how excited they get behind the announce desk. I'm eating all over myself like you last week, bro. Today, we want to highlight those whose commentary is synonymous with a specific performer. The story. As we list 10 commentators' favorite wrestlers. Before we start the list, let's throw honorable mentions to Paul Heyman and Rhino. Taz and Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar! Well, here comes the pain! Brock Lesnar! Well, here comes the pain! Well, here comes the pain! 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 This is heavy! And lastly, Booker T and Trick Williams. What? 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 Yeah! Uh huh! Yeah! Uh huh! Yeah! Uh huh! I like it! I like it! I like it! Oh yeah, man! Oh yeah, man! That's trick! That's trick! Uh huh. Can you hear you? I like it. Trick with it. Shamo. Shamo. What the hell? Stalin. Shamo. That's right. Number ten, Wade Barrett and LA Knight. Wade Barrett deserves credit in helping LA Knight resonate with the WWE audience. Right back over here. At least we got somebody with a little bit of bass in their voice. Barrett constantly sang Knight's praises, helping him feel like the megastar he would soon become. Oh, everybody wants to talk to us. Talk to us, please. My loins have been tingling ever since oh, you yeah. sat down, LA Knight. Man, I just want to listen to that guy talk for two straight hours, Corey. Can we do that? Wade's excitement and energy shows how important a role announcers play in elevating the talent in the ring. Assume the Kavorka. Give the people what they want. Yeah. This is Logan Paul for the United States Championship at SummerSlam. Signed, sealed, delivered. Yeah. He has the face of a champion. He has the body of a champion. He has the shoes of a but champion. You know what he yeah. And we're going to have ourselves... Number 9, JBL and King Booker. King Booker was a highlight of SmackDown in 2006, as was JBL on commentary. The poor kid from Houston, Texas has risen to the top! Especially whenever Bradshaw would worship Book during his world heavyweight title reign. Oh, it's like Camelot revisited. Oh, oh, oh my. Get ready for a divine moment. Layfield treated the champion just like the king Booker proclaimed to be. We are so lucky in America in a home where we have no king. This is like a religious experience. It's like a Muslim meeting Muhammad. He's climbed Everest. He's like Hercules, the only person to earn his spot with the gods. It's royalty. Look at the pinky. It's not that easy to be so entertaining, yet still generate heel heat. However, Booker was able to do it in no small part thanks to JBL's tremendous commentary. King right Booker there. is not only the greatest wrestler in SmackDown, he's also the best commentator on SmackDown. He won't be saying, oh hell, he's royal. Royal people do not use language like that, Michael. That is long has it in for King Booker. Number eight, Corey Graves with multiple wrestlers. For Corey Graves will include multiple wrestlers, simply because Graves does a great job putting each talent over on commentary to the point where he has numerous favorites. Cena and Joe. John uh, Cena. Uh, uh, Cena. Uh, Cena. Sit down, John Cena. Here it comes. Kinshasa! This is especially true in the case of the revival. Yes! Yes! A thousand times 
yes! This is like one of those occasions you hear people talk about the time they saw Elvis live or the time they saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. Yeah, it's transcendent. Go, Every time the Revival steps in the ring. Tajiri and Tazawa are my favorite tag team. It's only because the Revival aren't in the ring, but you get what I'm saying. Shatter Machine! Oh Shatter Machine! God. Xavier Rose! Shatter Machine! Shatter Machine! Oh. Hey, Shatter Machine. Wow, there's the Revival! Yes, a thousand times, yes! Rusev. Byron, when's your birthday? August 20th. Cancel Rusev Day! It is Sheamus' birthday, and he was eliminated by Slater! Yeah. Sheamus' birthday's on Rusev Day? This match. Well, Byron, let me ask you a question, since you're such an expert. When's the last time The Undertaker won a casket match on Rusev Day? And of course, Corey pays special attention to his wife, Carmella. She's hotter than hell! She's sweeter than honey! Mella is money! When she becomes Raw Women's Champion, we may renew our wedding vows, Saxton. Triple H told me about a real romantic spot here in Vegas. This is the part of the show where Twitter gets mad at me for, quote, simping. Yes. But the fact of the matter is, I know what it's all about. Unlike everybody at home typing with their thumbs. Number seven, Vince McMahon and Shawn Michaels. Vince McMahon is often remembered for his very close relationship with Shawn Michaels. The boyhood dream has come true for Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels! Vince would go crazy over Michaels on commentary to ridiculous levels at times. Oh! Unbelievable! Unbelievable! McMahon's high-pitched yelling and fawning over HBK was a staple of the new generation era. But you want to talk extraordinary, it won't get any more extraordinary than that man right there, the leader of the new WWF generation. One foot, one foot, one foot. Oh, look at that! One foot, whoa, 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 one foot. The most charismatic WWF superstar in the world today! And he got it, he got it, he got it! And you're for the Pelucho! Vince set Sean away with a lot of behind the scenes. Meanwhile, on screen, the heartbreak kid could do no wrong in the eyes of the chairman. Oh my goodness! Yes! 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 Number six, Pat McAfee and Jey Uso. Back during his days on SmackDown, Pat McAfee was known for getting up and dancing along to Shinsuke Nakamura's entrance. Great life right now! This might be the greatest one yet! But after Jey Uso took WWE by storm in 2023, Pat became a huge supporter. McAfee loved yeeting with the people whenever Jey entered the arena, thus helping Jey and his entrance feel even more big time. How could you not call the whole place? Is that what Enjoying uh, Jey Uso and the WWE fans here. I'm yeeting all over myself like you last week, Cole. Pat's infectious energy rubbed off on Michael Cole, who also enjoyed getting involved with the yeet. Although McAfee had to teach Cole how to yeet correctly. You're doing it too early. Premature yeeting right now. <laughs> You're right on rhythm with that bottom finger. Oh! Yeet! Corey, I'm not McAfee. I can't get up on the table. I'm too old, but I can still yeet here at ringside. You got your yeet bottom finger, Cole. Stop yeet. Number 5, Bobby Heenan and Ric Flair. When Ric Flair joined the World Wrestling Federation, Bobby Heenan made the nature boy feel larger than life on commentary and during interviews. Greatest mind in this sport made the phone call. Give me a big woo. Woo! There you the have world. it. Roddy Heavyweight Piper. Champion. Woo! Let's give a big one. Woo! The brain put over Flair so well that even if certain WWF fans had never seen Rick before, they knew he was a massive star. You want to compare the man that wears this belt to Hulk Hogan? <laughs> that would be like comparing ice cream to horse manure. We're in the money, yes, we are in the money. And I'm talking about the new WWF champion, Rick. Flair. Heenan stuck up for Nate in hilarious fashion, including by demanding everyone be fair to Flair. Yeah, take a Oh, look at that! Oh, look at 
Be yeah, fair to Flair the way, way to do it. If you don't want to be fair to Flair, then do it the way you're doing. But if you really want to be fair to Flair, to be fair to Flair, that's don't the way to do it. Don't start with a fair to Flair. Be fair and say that's a heck of a run. Only a man is fair as Flair would show up at WrestleMania. Will you stop it? Well, they said Flair wasn't fair about what he's done, but Flair's always been fair. Everybody knows how fair Ric Flair's been. And if you can't be fair to Flair, who can Flair be Flair fair to? So if you're fair to him, there's no reason why you shouldn't be fair to him. He's fair to you. I always said Ric Flair's the kind of a man I say, be fair to Flair. If Flair can't be fair to you, why should you be fair to Flair? But Flair is fair to you, so you should be fair to Ric Flair. Wouldn't you say so? I mean, be fair. Makes sense to me. Number three, Michael Cole and Cody Rhodes. During his heel run, Michael Cole regularly waxed lyrical about the Miz. <laughs> But no matter if he was heel or face, Cole would repeatedly cheer on John Cena to ridiculous levels. But this was more of a case of Vince McMahon ordering Michael over the headset. I've seen John so, Cena come overcome so much adversity because in his career. Because you're a homer. What you do is hang on to John Cena. Yep. Like JR used to hang on to Steve Austin. So does everybody. Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Stone Cold! So does everyone. John Cena's my best friend! But Cole's best work came during Cody Rose's ascent towards the WWE Championship. Eliminated! The American Nightmare! One step closer to the American Dream! Hey, Ro Roman Reigns, what inning are we on anyway? The voice of WWE was essential in telling Cody's story and helping him finish it. I cannot think of a better person to represent where WWE is going today than Cody Rhodes. After all, it was Michael that first said, finish the story. Finish the story at Wrestle. Media. A phrase that got over huge and ultimately defined the American Nightmare's journey and capture of the title. Because at WrestleMania 40, you get to say for the first time in the history of this company that a Rhodes is undisputed WWE Champion. For the first time, a Rhodes can call himself WWE Champion. Cody Rhodes finished the story. Cody Rhodes finished the damn story! Sometimes this business just gets you right in the heart. Number four, Tony Schiavone and Sting. In WCW is a special moment anytime Sting appeared with Tony Schiavone's legendary voice on call to yell out the Stinger's name. <laughs> Shivani remained a pivotal piece of the icon's presentation in AEW. Hyper reaction was spectacular as fans couldn't wait to hear Tony scream, It's Sting. Oh, oh my god, it's Sting! It's Sting, Tony! It's Sting! Sting has arrived! It's Sting! You tell him! This is Sting! Ready? It's Sting! Number two, The King and The Rock. Jerry the King Lawler's love for the likes of Deborah or the cat could have warranted an inclusion here. Let's hear it for Deborah and her puppies! But we've decided to focus on the King's support for The Rock. Lawler was the Great One's biggest hype man, with priceless reactions, screaming, and laughing along to the People's Champion's promos and comedy. Poontang your ass on out of here. No! 
Wait a minute, you shut your candy ass up for the rocks make pinto beans out of your monkey ass. <laughs> I didn't know the rock could speak Spanish so fluently. Get a meet a Mr. Tabolo. Ah! Hey, Bill, what do you think about meet Mr. Tabolo? Time tonight. The first elbow by the rock. The great one. He can dance as well. Oh, man, this guy can do it all. Watch this. Watch this. Whoa, the big one. Even though Jerry was a heel, there was no way he could fault the promo bull. Just bring it. Oh, my gosh. Just bring it, JR. It's the people's employment agent here. It says the first one, what you could do is you could go right back to the Waffle House and sling hash all day. <laughs> or 20,000 Hulkamaniacs. Or 20,000 screaming Canaanites. Canaanites? So shut up, bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. One of the King's famous catchphrases was his signature call, hyping up The Rock's people's elbow. It's the most electrifying move in sports entertainment today! The people's elbow! The most electrifying move in sports entertainment! People's elbow! The most electrifying move in sports entertainment today! Here it is, the people's elbow! And here comes the most electrifying move in sports entertainment history! The people's elbow! Clash it to the heart of Lance Storm! How long has it been since we've seen the most electrifying Number one, JR and Stone Cold. There isn't a more iconic commentator and wrestler pairing than that of good old JR and Stone Cold Steve Austin. And that's the bottom line, you know why? Yes, I do. You're damn right, cause Stone, Stone Cold, Cold said, said so. so. Sure, the rattlesnake was raising all kinds of hell during his heyday. Good God! <laughs> But what would it all mean if Jim Ross wasn't on the call, going just as crazy as we were while watching along with us? Whoa! Whoa, here we go! Here we go! Tyson Austin! Tyson Austin! Yeah! Let's go! 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 let us go Jim could make it feel like the world just ended if the heels took over. He's out! Count him! Count him! Count him! Damn it! You count him! Two! Three! What? Three! Three! What? Where's three? What? Or make it feel like the entire universe had been saved if the baby faces came out on top. And nowhere was this more prevalent than when Austin opened up a can of war pass. Steve Austin is one top SOB, and he is over. He is kicking a mud hole in Bret Hart. Ross said it best. He was the toughest SOB in the WWF. And Stone Cold Steve Austin is the toughest son of a bitch I ever saw. The toughest son of a bitch in the WWE. He has earned the reputation as the Stone Cold, Stone Cold. Stone Cold! 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 It's here! Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Here we go! Stone Cold! Stone Cold is here! It's Austin! Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out a similar video of Jim Ross being a national treasure for 25 minutes straight. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.